president, uh, obviously disappointed by the OPEC decision, uh, and is going to be willing to work with Congress as we, as we think about uh, what the right relationship with Saudi Arabia needs to be going forward. John Kirby today, the White House saying it is reevaluating its relationship with Saudi Arabia after OPEC slashed oil production to keep oil prices up, in effect underwriting Vladimir Putin's war in Ukraine because that gives him more oil profits. This after Senate Foreign Relations Chairman Bob Menendez yesterday threatened to cut off U.S. assistance to the Saudis for siding with Russia in the war, despite thousands of U.S. troops and the most advanced U.S. weapon systems helping to protect the Saudi kingdom. Here with me now is Michael Crowley, a diplomatic correspondent for the New York Times. Michael, Senator Menendez said, quote, there simply is no room to play both sides of this conflict. Either you support the rest of the free world and trying to stop a war criminal from violently wiping off an entire country off the map, or you support him. So, I mean, I don't think they could get this done in the Senate between now and the end of the year, when the Senate, of course, could always change hands. But would an immediate freeze on our arms sales and withdrawing troops be enough to deter the Saudis? Are they paying attention, or do they feel that... They've got the they've got the oil production and they are in line with Vladimir Putin on this. Well, Andrea, unfortunately, I think the Saudi attitude may be that they have the leverage here. Um, of course, American military support is important to the kingdom, but you know they had to price in this kind of American reaction, so to speak, price it into the uh, to the vote they cast and the position they took in this um, OPEC move that will have the effect of raising uh, global energy prices and gasoline prices at the pump here in the United States. I think that the big question for the Saudis is whether this is largely posturing a few weeks before midterm elections in which Republicans have made gas prices a big issue. And the Saudis may be calculating that there's going to be a lot of bluster from President Biden and the Democrats, but no real action, which, let's be honest, if you look at the track record of U.S.-Saudi relations going back for many years now, there is, tends to be much more tough talk in Washington about cracking down on the Saudis than any actual cracking down. Yeah, even Joe Biden telling me in the 2019 debate before the, the election that he would make the Saudis a pariah because of the Khashoggi murder, the brutal murder, and then, of course, going to Riyadh last July, which is one of the reasons why this is so controversial. But the worst reason is that gas prices are now going up, and even before they announced it, in anticipation of the OPEC plus decision, which is, of course, the Saudis and Russia. Well, that's right, Andrea. And, you know, it's not just gas prices. What you would hear from Biden administration officials is that there are a whole bunch of issues with which we have to work with the Saudis, including, including increasingly trying to have some kind of a diplomatic break, breakthrough with Israel. We saw in the Trump administration the Abraham Accords, this normalization between Israel and other Arab states. The big prize for Israel at this point is Saudi Arabia. I think Biden officials would very much like to see that happen. So it's not just about the energy prices. And that means that Saudi Arabia again, has a lot of leverage. It always has. And the U.S. never really takes that step to throw relations into a crisis, even when the Saudis drive us crazy, as they often do. And one possible way that they could get more oil pumped, although the, the, the equipment, the refinery equipment is really way out of date, is Venezuela is doing something, you know, lifting sanctions, letting Chevron in Venezuela start pumping again. But the Maduro you know, dictatorship has not done anything towards democratic reforms, and that would be politically, you know, toxic, especially in Florida. Very difficult for President Biden to make a move like that, which would put some more oil on the market. However, I think that U.S. officials don't think that it would be a kind of game-changing amount of oil that would dramatically change the tra trajectory of prices. I was traveling last week in South America with Secretary of State Antony Blinken. This uh, specific topic came up, you know, and what he essentially said was if Maduro takes important steps to talk to the opposition and diminish the repression in his country, then there can be some kind of a move by the U.S. that would be reciprocal. But it didn't sound like we were on the brink of it, and I don't think you should hold your breath. Michael Crowley with the uh, best information from that trip. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And that does Thank it you, for Andrea. this edition of Andrea Mitchell Reports. Remember, follow us online on Facebook and on Twitter at Mitchell Reports. Chris Chansing will be with us after this brief break. <coughs> so what's going on? I'd like to try. So what's going on with uh, with this particular... Uh, 
evil industry, the Saudi Arabian government. I'm going to tell you what's going on. Our governments have sold us downstream. And we have allowed for them yeah. to, to uh, gain extreme power because of the oil market. And now today we're having to deal with the consequences because of that in which what politicians has done. Going all the way back, I guess, into the uh, beginning phases of even the JFK era. Whenever uh, Grandpa Bush, Senior Bush, not 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 uh, uh, Bush H. Junior, I mean Bush H. Senior, that uh, created the Desert Storm and the Desert Shield War, war after Ronald Reagan's administration, but his father, that was an oil typhoon, that it goes all the way back into that era. Whenever we allowed for these people to gain control of OPEC and to become as powerful as what they are. Even Donald Trump made mention about us going to war with a, with a group of people over there that basically created a vacuum after they got rid of Saddam Hussein to where now that whole region basically got invaded by a whole group of nothing but extreme left-wing uh, terrorists from every direction that you can think of. And now they know that they had everything in the world to do with plotting, planning, and financing 9-11 in addition to some of the other creepy things that they've done. And because America has allowed for them to come over here and become so embedded with our government, now we'll basically be shooting ourselves in the foot or cutting our own throats if we cut their throats. Bad politics, bad international politics is what has put us in the position that we are right now with the Saudis and even the Russians, as far as I'm concerned, that now, consequently, the world is going to have to pay for in some form or fashion, either through high gas or high... Uh, commodities pertaining to food or whatever. I mean, this is only the beginning phases of some of the horrendous great sorrows that it talks about in the Bible that, yes, people will see the, the uh, mastermind of 9-11 towards being basically the physical Satan that I've been telling people about now for about 30, 30, 30, 32 years maybe, 33 years, something like that. Kept telling them, kept telling them, kept telling them. And it went through one and out the other. And, of course, they know. They know what they're doing. They know that they're basically putting America over the barrel to the effect that we're either going to have to sink or swim pertaining to all this stuff about the greenhouse, uh, the Green New Deal. And they know that we're not established enough in that because of, once more, we've been sold out by the conglomerate oil typhoons for the past 30, 40 years that convinced everybody that we wasn't doing damage to the earth. And now we're going to have to do a lot, a lot of catching up just to be able to make up for that in which what has occurred in the past 30 plus years. During which time, the Saudis may very well see that this is their golden opportunity to not just hurt, cripple, or, or uh, main the United States, but to actually bring us to our knees. That's always a possibility, because they're not to be trusted. They're evil. They're demonic. Um, they could care less about bombing them people over there in Yemen towards bombing hospitals and schools and, and weddings and funerals and, and all the above, kind of like... Uh, like poisonous Putin, that basically uh, war to them means war. They don't go by a certain standard of war. They just, whenever they get ready to go to war, they go to war. Kind of like what they done back in the Bible days. Well, guess what? 
there's consequences in doing that. And that may be very well what the president agreed to today with the G8 summit. Uh, I think it was digitally uh, done, but that may very well be the next steps that, that not only America has to take, but the world in general towards bringing heavy, heavy consequences to the Russian government pertaining to what that they have been embarked upon for the past eight months because it's very obvious that they don't care anything at all about any type of trajectory or any type of standard in regards towards the Geneva uh, Convention in regards towards rules and regulations and not bombing schools and not bombing funerals and not bombing funeral uh, weddings and not bombing hospitals. Uh, it's very obvious that these people don't care about that. So they're going to have to move their they're going to have to move their ante up to another level. And I told them this from the get-go, that they was not dealing with sheep herders here. They was dealing with some very, very sophisticated people. And if you'll study their history, going all the way back to the, to the uh, barbarian age, they are some very, very aggressive people whenever it comes to superiority. And I truly believe that they're using Ukraine for a stepping stone. They're using Ukraine for basically a, a pawn to get to another level in that in which where they want to go. Because they have failed in their own financial, financial gains towards all the oligarchs not coming out on top the way that they intended for, for them to do. Uh, because of various reasons. Uh, I'm sure one of them was probably the nuclear disaster that happened. I think it was in 86 that led to the, the collapse of the old Soviet Union. Um, basically had to declare bankruptcy and start all over again. And then um, we see where COVID has had a big, a big effect upon a lot, of, a lot of countries that couldn't stand this type of a hit. And I think that that was one of the things that motivated them that said, you know what, let's just go ahead and go through with this. They'd already started something in 20 and 15, but they didn't accomplish what they wanted to, what they wanted to achieve. So they thought that this time that they would achieve it, but they, but they thought that they was going to be able to achieve it in days, not in weeks, not in months, not in years. They thought that within a matter of days that the Ukrainian people would lay down, surrender, and give up any type of fight pertaining to their territory and pertaining to their freedom. Well, President Putin, poisonous Putin, and his oligarchs underestimated those people because they have already had a taste of freedom. They like that taste of freedom, and they want to continue to have that freedom, and it's either death or freedom. Death or freedom. We was hoping the same type of original fight would have come out of the Afghanistan people, just like why, right now what's going on over in in uh, Iraq, Iran, I mean, pertaining to the women standing up that is being very, very courageous. If those same women in Iraq was over in Afghanistan, I think that that whole scenario would have turned out to have been a different scenario. But once more, whenever you have people that's been, that's been, um, humiliated all their lives and they don't never have a right to even speak much less perform in front of the public taking off their bells and and not having positions in in state or local or federal government or or uh, schools or whatever whenever you have a group of people that has been uh, cowered down for this long of a time even going over there and trying to reform them after 20 plus years we see now where those attempts was basically futile, very, very futile of spending about $2 trillion, 20 years of dedication, lives, psychological damage, physical damage, financial damage, and the bang for the buck that the Americans got was 11 days later, the Taliban takes back over the country that we was trying to reform. Like I said, if those same women over in Iran was in and during the time of the Afghanistan situation, I truly believe that that whole scenario would have turned out to have been completely, totally different. But because of whatever reason, 
they lay down. And because of whatever reason, now they're going to have to deal with the complications of laying down, which is basically uh, becoming an enslaved uh, an enslaved slave to those people, all them wicked, demonic, cruel uh, groups of people over there, the, the Jihad, the Taliban, um, all the other uh, really just crazy, crazy groups. Uh, I think there's about 67 of them in total uh, of different organizations over there that's constantly fighting one another because they're fighting for superiority themselves over there. But at the same time, they have taken over all that equipment. Now they have got government leading positions in that country. And now basically we're having to deal with those people on a on a open standard like we would any other good countrymen, knowing good and well that they're not good countrymen. Same thing with dealing with the Saudi Arabians. We should have gave up that quest a long, long time ago. And and whenever I say a long, long time ago, I'm saying during 9-11. After 9-11 happened, we should have shut our deals down with them and, and never had any more dealings with them and considered them a terrorist state in which that's exactly what they are. And now we see that because of them buttering up or but, butter, buddying up to the Russian government pertaining to their affairs that basically speaks volumes about the very things that I've been preaching and teaching now for the past 30 some odd years. So was old Juby, the individual that's talking in behind the camera, was he really mentally incompetent? Was he really delusional or illusional towards making all this stuff up? I guarantee you, proof is in the pudding. And before it's over with, It'll get worse before it gets better, pertaining to Russia and the Saudi government and other, I think there's one or two other countries, North Korea maybe one of them, as far as budding up uh, with this situation towards thinking that they're going to be able to achieve their dominance with, with, uh, with this type of strategy, barbaric strategy, in regards towards a open democratic republic. That, that's basically where the struggle or the war is right now. It's, it's between the free, open, fair world versus the old world. You know, they keep talking about new world order, new world order. Well, we need to conform the old world order pertaining to what the Americans have already done, accomplished for the past 100 years before we even conceive towards going over to a new world order. Because if we can't conform the old world order, do you really think that we are going to do any good towards the New World Order? They're already fighting right now, pertaining to Russia and China, towards who's actually going to be in control of the new monetary global currency. See, once more, you got the entanglement of people, uh, too many chiefs and not enough Indians. Problems. Problems on every front. And as far as I'm concerned, in the late 80s, during Ronald Reagan's administration, has put us where we are today in regards towards international, global affairs. Good luck to all of us, as we say again and again and again, God bless you, God bless America, and thank you for your prayers and your time, and shalom.